Hello there and welcome to Football Everyday, your weekly dose of football chat and banter coming to you live and direct from the studios here at the Monara Star. Hello there, I am Zach and in the studio with me we got the usual football everyday crew minus our friend Chevy Singh. We got Daryl, we got it's Brian, great, we got Nelson, and we are here to run the rule over everything that's been happening in the English Premiership. Okay, let's get straight into the football chat. Guys, last weekend was an excellent weekend's worth of football. Uh, we'll start with the Merseyside derby. Um, um. <laughs> That's a good one. You're, you're, you must be a very happy yeah, man because last uh, last weekend's two two nil win over yeah. Everton saw the return of Fernando Torres to goal scoring form. Now, how happy are you about that, mate? Well, I mean, definitely. I mean, an excellent result because I mean, Torres basically finally I mean got his shooting boots back, and mm -hmm. I mean, I think Liverpool fans will be basically like looking forward to more from our golden boy. Yeah, good stuff. And you know, obviously, uh, uh, Robbie Keane had a good game as mm -hmm. well. He finally did something right. Uh, he made an assist for one of the goals. How important is that for his confidence, mate? I mean, well, I mean, it's the fact that Robbie Keane's been trying very hard. I mean, mm -hmm. like, uh, it just it's not be happening for him, but I, it should be coming in, in a matter of I mean, uh, games. Yeah, yeah. It definitely for Liverpool fans, and it must be great to have seen him uh, linking up with Torres mm -hmm. so well. But Brian, I, I know we were talking about this uh, before the show. Uh, Liverpool's title aspirations. He's always going to write them off. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, but like, you know, looking at it, you know, Liverpool, you know, all right, they haven't been sparkling, yeah. but they've been getting the results. I mean, how serious is their challenge this year? I, I think you put it, you hit the nail on the head. They have not been playing exceptionally good football, mm -hmm. but they've been getting the right results. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, uh, for a number of matches, they've been getting like last minute wins. Yeah. So that, to be a successful team, to be, actually be champions at the end of the season, you need for mm. that to happen. Mm. And when you have luck on your side, uh, I don't know, I hesitate to say, but this could be Liverpool's year. Okay, okay, because it's their best start in ages, right, yeah. guys? I mean, uh, you know, normally we've seen Liverpool kind of stutter and then, mm -hmm. you know, get into life later on in the season. This time they've rolled out the blocks. So, Brian, mate, let's put it on the line, mate. Do you see them in the top three coming end of the year? Top, top two, even? Um, yeah, I would say uh, top three. Definitely top three. Top three. Um, yeah. To be champions, you need a little bit extra. Uh, for me, the, the only thing that could set Liverpool back would be a number of injuries near the tail end of the season. Mm -hmm. And when you think of injuries happening to people like Steven Gerrard, Fernando Torres, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. do they have a big enough squad mm -hmm. to back that up? Okay, yeah. well, that's, a, that's a very good point indeed. Uh, another man on the comeback trail is Cristiano Ronaldo and he got back into goal scoring form in the Premiership last weekend as United beat Bolton 2-1. Now, Smith, you must be happy to see your Portuguese winker back on the flank scoring yeah, goals. Yeah, um, definitely. But, you know, I think United, well, give them credit, they played well, created quite a number of chances. But I think they were pretty fortunate in the end to get a penalty. And I think once they scored a penalty, you knew that, you kind of knew that a second goal would come. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. but I think poor Bolton were hard done by him. You know, Gary Mixon was like, live it, you know, mm -hmm. with the decision. Mm -hmm. And to be fair to Bolton, I think um, it definitely wasn't a penalty. I think mm -hmm. we all agree as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think Rooney's second goal, Second goal by Rooney was a pure class, yeah. yeah. Very nice. Well, we're going to talk about uh, the referees and all the blunders that they're making a little later on. But I want to stay to unite with United, Nelson. Okay, they've started to play now. Mm -hmm. uh, can they still make up all the ground? I mean, they started slowly this year, like yeah. they did last year. Now they look like they're picking up form mm -hmm. again. Have they left it too late or can uh, they still make well, up the ground? Well, they've got a game in hand, um, which hopefully they'll win. Mm -hmm. um, Ronaldo's back. We set up the goal for Rooney. Yeah. Um, you know, say what you want about him, but I think with him in the side, mm -hmm. United are looking back to you know the usual attacking self. Okay. You know they've got the speed, the pace now, and the counter attacks all all come through Ronaldo. Berbatov had a good game as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think it's a matter of time before they start scoring goals again. Okay, fantastic. And you know what? We saw the result of the season so far last weekend, as Hull City came back from a goal down to beat Arsenal at the Emirates. Now, how many of you guys could have predicted that? I mean, boys. Daryl, I know you like the underdogs, right? But this is a fantastic result. I mean, it's just amazing to see. I mean, like, I mean, they, I mean, as you said, I mean, a team like Hull, I mean, they didn't give up at all at the Emirates. Yeah, yeah. And like, I mean, I mean, uh, when you look at Hull, I mean, did you give them, fancy them? No, oh, I mean, I mean, nobody could have predicted it. Well, result. on this show last week, mm -hmm. none of us none called of us it went, right. Yeah. Uh, we we just went yep. for an emphatic mm -hmm. Arsenal win. Yeah, you know. And and I love the fact that Phil Brown, the Hull manager didn't uh, pick a side to go to Arsenal and sit back. Mm -hmm. They picked a side to go and attack Yeah, Arsenal. amazing stuff. Yeah, and uh, great goal by Giovanni there. Brilliant goal, brilliant goal. I mean, him and uh, Marlon King up front, I think will be a handful for a lot of defences. Okay, fantastic. All right, well, we're going to take a little break now. When we come back, more football chat, and also mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about the Star Tiger FC Road to Barcelona contest. We've got two more questions for you. 
So keep it right here on Football Every Day. Hello there and welcome back to Football Everyday. Okay, before the break we were running the rule over last weekend's matches in the English Premiership. And you can't talk about last weekend without talking about Disaster Club Spurs. Boys, they lost again this time. Uh, they fell to um, Portsmouth. Darryl, mate. I mean, they're talking about one game left for one day. One day is now called one game one day. I mean, <laughs> but what's again, going on? I mean, you look at Spurs right now. I mean, six games into the season, no wins. Two points. Mm -hmm. I mean, what? I mean... Dark horses for the for the <laughs> for, <laughs> for relegation. Yeah. yeah, you know it, it's amazing, Brian. They they spent loads in the summer, like last year. Everyone was talking Spurs top four yeah. material. Yeah. Yet again, they flattered to deceive. I mean, one thing, Ramos, you think it's right that the crowd have turned on him? It's uh, only been eight months, mate. Yeah, right. And yeah. you know, and when he came in last season, they won the League Cup. He was viewed as the savior He's the for Messiah, Spurs. Right? Uh -huh. Yeah, I I think the real trouble at Spurs is the is the businessman running the club, mm -hmm. Daniel Levi and his partners. Mm. I mean, they waited. Right at the end, even when the season started, mm -hmm. you know, they waited right at the end to get rid of uh, Berbatov. They were mm -hmm. holding out for more money. Mm -hmm. And they could have got Andre Ashwin. The mm -hmm. deal was there for the taking. Mm -hmm. and they held, uh, Zenit St. Petersburg held out for more money. Spurs didn't give in. And I think that's the reason, the main reason why Spurs are suffering now is because uh, one day wasn't allowed to bring in his own players. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So well, obviously, you know, definitely their own doing there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we talked to Madara. I think he made a good point about how they, they tried to hold out for more money with the Berbatov deal. They also put all the eggs in the yeah, Ashavin right. basket, which didn't happen. Mm -hmm. But guys, I mean, look at the Spurs team now, right? Quickly, um, do you see them as relegation fodder? I mean, they surely they got enough quality to get out of this. I mean, it's the age-old cliche, you know. Uh, I mean, years ago, I remember people said that Nottingham Forest were too good to go down. Mm -hmm. You're never mm -hmm. too good to go down. I mean, early season results, Spurs should be favourites for the drop. Mm. You know, oh. they have to get the act together. The table does not lie, right, yeah, guys? Right. Okay, great stuff and. Just a brief word, um, we got news at Newcastle, obviously. Joe Kinnear has joined Newcastle mm -hmm. as interim manager. Yet more Cockneys on the North East. I mean, is this a good thing, Nelson, quickly? Well, I think it's, you know, good. It's the last thing the Geordies want to see. I think it's good and bad. Cockney. I mean, you know, it's not like he's the best manager or the most well-known manager. But I think what's important is that they've got a manager in at least, you know. People like Michael Owen and saying they've got to sort things out ASAP, mm. you know. So I think it's a, it's a start. May not be a good thing, but at least it's a start. Well, laughably, uh, Joe Kinnear is actually banned for two games, so they haven't quite got the manager yet because he has to sit but, up the next but two. But Zach, I mean, a correction there. I mean, which which club basically would hire a caretaker manager to take over a caretaker manager's place? <laughs> 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 Answers on the postcard to football every day, please. It's ridiculous, man. Okay, yeah. nice one, guys. Well, we're gonna take a little break from the football chat and talk about the Star Tiger FC Road to Barcelona contest. Uh, I think I'll let my man Nelson fill you in on all the juicy details. Uh, thanks, Zach. Um, that's right. Uh, the Star Tiger FC Road to Barcelona contest, as we all know, um, runs for a total of eight weeks. And just for your information, in case you know you've missed out on it, we are into week four, of course. Okay, so we'll be giving you two questions right after this. Um, pretty simple. You got to look out for the entry form in the Football Everyday pullout that comes out every Friday. All right, just grab an entry form, collect all the eight weeks questions, you know, collect your answers, fill in the slogan and then send it to us and you could walk away with the grand prize of a trip to Barcelona to wow. catch the El Clasico between, you know, Real Madrid and Barcelona, of course. Um, where, where can you get the questions? Definitely right here on the Football Everyday Podcast. You've got to tune in to us every week, get the two questions here, compile all the questions, fill in the slogan, send in the form and you, walk, you could walk away with the prize. Um, questions for week two, uh, sorry, week four. Um, first one, okay, pay attention, yeah. Um, which team conceded eight goals in a Champions League match? Which team conceded eight goals in a Champions League match, okay? And second question for week four, who was Chelsea's owner before Roman Abramovich? Mm -hmm. Who was Chelsea's owner before Roman Abramovich? Um, don't worry in case you missed out on it this time as we'll repeat the questions just before we leave on segment three, but I'm sure it my, my mates here know, know the answers to both wow. questions. You know. Brian, you know the question, uh, you yeah. know the answer to the question too, don't you? Question two, yeah, but the first one is pretty tricky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. first one's pretty it's tricky. Brian was saying as well, um, you know, in case you don't walk away with the grand prize, let me just show you, we've got like Barcelona. an Arsenal yeah. uh, yeah, autograph yeah. jersey. That's we've right. got the one yeah, by Messi. Right. Messi, Messi shirt there. here That's right. also up for grabs. So great prizes, you got Tiger goodies, you got uh, signed shirts. Um, I want to ask you, Brian, would you put that Arsenal shirt in your house, mate? I mean, it's got all the signatures there. <laughs> Definitely, man. Uh, you're, you're, you're putting me on the spot. In your study, you're putting, perhaps? You're putting me on the spot. 
I'll have to say no. <laughs> You'll have to say no, but I'm sure all you gunners out there, I know this I'm is just a, eyeing this shit. This is a memento to treasure, so uh, do enter our contest there. Okay, when we come back after this break, we're going to be running the rule over this weekend's matches, and there's some excellent matches. But quickly, before we go, the last word on the Classico boys. Is this an occasion to be savored? I mean, it's a once in a lifetime experience to actually attend this match, right? It's a derby to beat all derbies, the medal of all derbies. Well, oh, I don't say. know. I, yeah. I kind of still think the Merseyside derby is on par, <laughs> but, you know. But only one, one, one team plays in the Mercia Derby. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, indeed. But uh, yeah, Nelson, mate, you, 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 like, you like the Classico? Yeah, definitely. I think this season's one, definitely one to look forward to as well. Now, mm -hmm. I think both teams are pretty different now. Okay. Lots of new players in as well, so it should be exciting. Fantastic. So you know what you're going to have to do, guys? Enter this contest and win a chance to get to Barcelona for that game. All right, we're going to take a little break now. When we come back, take a look at this weekend's big matches, including... Chelsea vs Villa, City vs Liverpool. We'll be right back. Right back. We had Daryl there bouncing the yeah, ball man. rather loudly. But we're right back on Football Every Day and we're going to talk about this weekend's matches now. Starting off with Chelsea vs Villa. Guys, this is a matchup between two informed teams. How do you see this one panning out? I mean, I'm looking at this one and saying that basically, I'm mean, talking to a lot of friends about it. The fact that it's basically, I mean, Martin only the only other British manager to capable of breaking into the top four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, Fergie aside, he's a, he's a permanent fixture, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brian, I read yeah. an interesting mm -hmm. stat today. Apparently, had Villa not conceded those two late goals mm -hmm. to Stoke so late in the game, they would be top by now. Really? Such is, such is their great form. Hmm. Amazing Pretty stuff. I mean, I've been impressed by Villa. Very impressed, you know, and uh, the other thing about mm. um, Chelsea versus Villa, mm. uh, the entertainment won't only be on the pitch, mm -hmm. okay, it will be off the pitch also because you've got two very demonstrative managers, mm -hmm. right. being, uh, Martin O'Neill and mm -hmm. uh, Luis Felipe Scolari. Yeah. You can bet your bottom dollar that it will be on the pitch side, you know, being demonstrative, mm -hmm. urging their teams on, mm. and O'Neill will actually be jumping up and down. <laughs> That's great stuff, yeah, you know, we, we got uh, Philip Scolari and Martin O'Neill, they're two very animated guys. But Nels, I want to ask you about Villa, mate. Yeah. They're very exciting. Last week, we, we called them everybody's uh, second mm. favourite team. What do you like about Villa, mate? Um, I think the main attraction to Villa now is you know, how, how they're playing. I think they're playing with lots of pace, lots of attacking flair. Mm. Um, Abon Lahore and Young in great form. Mm. And, and Karu as Karu, well. Yeah, yeah, the big Karu man well. can't stop that, scoring that, at that, the moment. The attacking trio, you know. And I think at the back, they're pretty solid as well. No Lawson. Mm. Um, you know, the whole team is playing well. Curtis Davis. And I think, you know, they did well against Brad, Brad Friedel in goal as well. Mm -hmm. Overall, I think they're pretty solid side now. Gareth Barry, you got to mention him as well. Yep, yep, um, yep. He's still a Villa player, Liverpool yeah. fans. At least <laughs> until January, <laughs> maybe. Mm -hmm. But guys, just quickly, last word on this. Chelsea, you can't talk about Chelsea at home without talking about that amazing home record. Daryl, is this the weekend it falls? I, I kind of hardly doubt that one. But I guess, I mean, Villa will be pushing them to the max. But I think they have enough in the tank to basically ward Villa off. Yeah, okay. Well, you know... To and me, I look at this game, Chelsea. I feel a score draw happening mm -hmm. here. But guys, I mean, I may be wrong. Score predictions? I'm going for a Chelsea win. Chelsea win. Yeah. Right? I'm with you, Zach. I think it's going to be a score, score draw. Score draw, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What yeah. about you now? Score draw. Okay, well, you know, whether or not you want to believe us, that's up to you. But like, you know, look out for that one because it's a very interesting matchup. Coming up next, we're going to talk about Man City versus Liverpool. This is another interesting game because obviously it features the billionaire boys of Man City. At the city of Manchester, Dow, you got a soft spot for City. Mixed loyalty. They're eh? blowing hot and cold. Mate. <laughs> Good one week, bad. Not moment. only Man City, Liverpool also. I mean, yep. it's a fighting team also. I mean, I, they, I mean, they don't do well against Stoke. They do well against Everton. So, yeah. which Liverpool is going to turn up mm -hmm. at the, the city of Manchester Stadium? Plus, uh, Marcus yeah. has got mm -hmm. a bit of history with Liverpool. You know, remember mm -hmm. some really tasty mm -hmm. matches there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would be. I mean, I would say advantage Liverpool to this one. I mean, going on the form, but I mean, Man City's home advantage never underestimate. Yeah, Man I think City. the other thing for Liverpool is going to be the fact they're going to play this one after a Champions League tie as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, good point. We know yeah. they've got problems. You know, they didn't beat. They didn't beat Stoke after they beat Marseille. Yeah. Man City has got yeah. a trip to Europe. I mean, yeah. a UEFA Cup tie also. Yeah, well, this is the kind of game where we mm. can see Rafa doing his uh, much criticized mm. rotational tactics, but. Uh, uh, if you were Rafa, Daryl, how would you play this game? Your strongest eleven, regardless uh, of the fact they played at midweek. It'll be, it'll be interesting because this game's on Sunday. So mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, they definitely will be looking at the I mean the score on, on the scores on Saturday. So I mean, like definitely a full squad for this one. Okay, okay, and 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 last word on City, uh, Brian. I mean, they've they've obviously got the talent. 
can they gel? I mean, they need to gel quickly. Lots of new players. In this exactly. Team. I, I think you perfectly you said it. You mm. know, uh, people like Robinho, Joe, Elano, especially the Brazilian mm. company talking, and mm -hmm. Sean Wright Phillips. Yeah. Yeah. They need to prove this is the biggest stage for them. Mm -hmm. You know, teams don't come bigger than Liverpool. Okay, mm -hmm. prove yourself. Prove to the city fans. Prove to your manager that you can do the job. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Very very good point there. And we got some of the interesting matches. Uh, to be played this weekend as well. I, I believe you got the you got the fixture list there, Nelson. That's right. Um, no, your team, Zach. Interestingly, Everton take on Newcastle. Mm, mm, I think mm. that's a pretty tasty one as well. Yeah. Well, guys, you know, quickly, uh, let me tell you about Everton. We're in dire dire straits at the moment. Uh, Moyes has just come out and say uh, mm -hmm. he's he's not signing a contract because there seems to be some problem there. A distinct lack of confidence in the Everton team, Daryl, as you saw in the Merseyside derby. How do you see them? Up against Newcastle. Well, they need to get off I mean, to get the win at at yeah. Gleeson Park. Three straight home yeah. defeats. So mate. that's I mean a bit of a. I mean, but then Newcastle also. I mean Newcastle basically been like leaking goals. So I guess yeah. it's going to be. I would say Everton has to get this one. And actually, yeah, uh, another notable fixture that um, the neutrals out there should look out for is troubled team Spurs taking on Hull at home. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. You know, beware Spurs yeah. fans because we've seen uh, Hull and just what they can bring to the table. They've got, they've got yeah. three points apart one That's of the North London. Exactly. Okay. Well, you know, just before we wrap up, we're going to we're gonna repeat the questions of the Star Tiger FC Road to Barcelona. No, Road to Barcelona contest. <laughs> mouthful, Zach, mouthful. As promised, that's a very big mouthful there. So, without further ado, Nelson, the questions. So, one more time, questions for week four. Which team conceded eight goals in a Champions League match? And question number two, who was Chelsea's owner before Roman Abramovich? Okay, fantastic stuff. And on that note, we have to say goodbye, but do tune in next week when we give you another two questions. Until then, enjoy your football. Goodbye. Bye, Raya.